Hello and welcome to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. This is the third in the Defendville series. It is called Outpost 356 by George Campbell. Now this is unfortunately another map which really doesn't give you anything to defend. There's no real objective in it. You're just kind of left to survive. Again, it's another Ambushville 2.0 I like to call it. Uh, although the thing this map does better than most of the others is it does provide a decent focus and a decent choke point, at least at the very beginning here. One outpost will be attacked in approximately 10 minutes. Incidentally, this cutscene at the beginning here is quite nice. The way the uh, rebels interact with you after the radio broadcast is finished is quite nice. They kind of set up the situation quite nicely. They tell you to set up turrets, then they go and man their positions. It's all very nicely done. So what happens next? All right, people, this is it. Defensive positions, go. Let's move. Dr. Freeman, you take care of the turret. But I did really like that. It sets up the map nicely. And then, of course, we're left to set up our defenses. So again, as I was talking about in the last video, I was talking about choke points and how they're very, very beneficial in a defense-style map. Uh, this map had a lot going for it in this regard, in that you just got this huge tunnel with obviously two exits so you can kind of prepare accordingly as there's only really two kind of obvious ways that the combine are going to attack from as far as you know at the beginning of the map anyway <laughs> as you'll see later things uh, go a little bit haywire which is unfortunate but from the player's point of view I think it's fairly obvious where the combine are going to be attacking from which is actually a very positive thing So the issue arises in that in the very first wave of combine, they actually break down from the skylights uh, above me in this section here. And it can feel like they basically come from behind you, depending on where your focus is, which is usually on either end of the tunnel when the ambush starts. It can really feel like the combine are coming from behind you, uh, which really kind of screws over any kind of defensive position you've set up. It really makes you feel like you've wasted this 10 minutes of prep time is a real shame. I really think that if there'd been a wave or two of combine just coming from the uh, tunnel exits here and then have the skylight attack happen later on, that could have worked quite nicely. Perhaps have these skylights break in along with the hunter ambush to really screw up the defences on the final wave or something like this. But yeah, having it right at the start, it feels like a giant fuck you to the player basically. Uh, a positive thing is that you can actually look around in either exit of the tunnel and there's actually stuff to find out there. There's like little cubby holes hidden behind vines and all this other stuff which you can go and explore which is great to see. Now talking about visuals for a moment, this map does a couple of things which I really like. Uh, although the visual detail obviously isn't quite up to kind of full single player map status which is very very hard to achieve in 10 days. But one of the things I really, really like about this map is the use of the overpass model in a one side of the tunnel exit here. It really gives the map a kind of non-orthogonal feel, and I talk about this quite a lot, but generally in brush-based engines, it can feel like your map is kind of very, very constricted to kind of 90 degree and 45 degree angles, and generally this is what you see in any brush-based game, really. It's really hard to get away from that. There's kind of little tricks you can do here and there, especially with map models kind of put things at strange angles and uh, George does a great job in this map kind of using the overpass models from Half-Life 2 to uh, create some really interesting angles in the environment. You can see here they're at like a, a 12 or 15 degree angle to the environment which really just helps break up these kind of 90 and 45 degree angles. really do like it when I see stuff like that in maps. I suppose you could perhaps level the criticism on this map as well, that's again just loads of loads of stuff to do and it feels a lot like busy work after a couple of minutes just setting up all these mines and all these turrets, you can get a little bit much. This is also unfortunately a map which really gives you no indication of what's happening, you're just kind of left to your devices, you get told by the rebels to set up the turrets but then you're just kind of left to your own devices for 10 minutes. Now again, um, the caveat here is that obviously 
these maps were made in 10 days, so perhaps authors just didn't have time to you know, add all the scripting or kind of logic that's required to give the player a proper sense of what's happening. But I think it's very, very important to always keep the player's point of view in mind, especially when you're building maps like this. Uh, there are way too many maps in this pack, I think, where the player's just left on their own for 10 minutes with absolutely nothing happening which you really really want to avoid at all costs because it starts putting doubt in players minds especially if it's a, a mod like this uh, made by amateur developers uh, players can think well has the mod broken is the level broken and they'll start getting very very impatient very quickly if it's a full game you have a little bit more leeway because people tend to think that it's been tested and it works generally just you really want to kind of avoid this stuff uh, I think the person who did it best in this pack was actually Mega uh, Imno is very very gamey but that's just his style, you expect that from him. You get an on-screen timer telling you how many minutes you have left and Miga actually puts in lots of interesting little mini puzzles throughout the entire map that you can work on before the ambush starts and the great thing about Miga's map was that depending on how many of these puzzles you complete you actually gain more abilities, more um, devices in order to help you survive the attack which is a brilliant way of handling things. It gives the player something to do during the setup and it's actually meaningful. It actually helps them in the long run. It's not just busy work. So here we go, finally the ambush starts. And you can see here the skylights break immediately on the first wave. Uh, this caught me really by surprise uh, when I was streaming this live. I hadn't played this map before. And it, it was very, very frustrating spending 10 minutes setting up all these defences and then yeah, on the first wave they just become absolutely meaningless. In fact, your initial position uh, when the ambush starts is incredibly important on this map. It's almost like life or death almost, depending on which side of the station you start on. Because if you're on the other side of the platform, combine actually come from uh, up above, as well as the skylights, and you get completely surrounded very quickly. It's extremely dangerous to be over there. So this is the quote-unquote safe side. Got some hunters appearing now as well. The hunters in this map are really, really great. Again, I talk about this a lot in the other videos, but hunters are just fantastic siege breaker units, which is comes in really, really handy in a defensible map, as you might imagine. <laughs> I think one thing I would have liked to see, just as a general layout thing, is a little bit more cover placed on the actual platforms. Uh, not not just crates and things like that, but some actual hard cover that can't be destroyed or moved. I, I think that would have really, really helped, especially on the other platform. If you're around at the start, again, I was talking about just getting completely, totally destroyed on this platform over here. I think that could have been partially solved as well by just staggering the waves a bit more, just having certain directions that the combine attack from. I think a great example would be uh, Valve's kind of take on a defense scenario in episode 2 where you're defending the various antline tunnels. And Valve actually show you using a visual mechanic kind of where the enemies are going to be coming from and how many they're going to be with the lights on the tunnels. It lets, lets the player quickly set up a hasty defense of that tunnel. And then there's also a little bit of uh, puzzle solving and the fact that where do you place the NPCs and where do you place turrets and where do you place yourself in that kind of puzzle to defend all the entrances that are under threat. And that's another really nice way of doing things. I think something like that could have happened here as well. Uh, in a lot of maps really the enemies just kind of start attacking from all these different directions. You never really give them much hint about where the enemy actually are or where they're coming from. In some maps that actually works to the benefit. But I think it could have really helped in some maps to actually have some kind of visual mechanic like that. So, as you can see, we've just about managed to survive. This is on like the fourth or fifth attempt. This map was quite brutal until you realise you just have to stand on the other platform and you're fine. <laughs> just got one straggler here. So yeah, I really like the map visually. 
Uh, just the implementation of the setup time I really didn't like. And uh, the initial wave could have been staggered to be much better, I think. Alright, I'll be back soon with another defenseful map. See you next time.